All right. We have some extremely cringe, I would say, sociopathic <laughs> takes on vaccines coming from a variety of corners. We like to keep you updated on the worst takes all around with regards to coronavirus, vaccines, masks, and all the rest. Latest edition involves our friend Jimmy Kimmel. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. The number of new cases is up more than 300% from a year ago. Dr. Fauci said that if hospitals get any more overcrowded, they're going to have to make some very tough choices about who gets an ICU bed. I know that choice doesn't seem so tough to me. Vaccinated person having a heart attack? Yes, come right on in. We'll take care of you. Unvaccinated guy who gobbled horse goo? Rest in peace, Wheezy. You're... <laughs> Hilarious. That's sick. Cheering for people's deaths. So funny. Great humor. I mean, this is just part of a trend that we've seen of people believing that if you don't get the vaccine, you actually deserve to die and that we should cheer for that. And deny health care. And deny people health care. Right. I mean, that was, I, I'm still floored by this doctor that went on MSNBC, received zero pushback when they were like, yeah, if you don't have the vaccine, then you shouldn't get health care. I mean, yeah. again, from people who supposedly support universal health care and health care is a human right. This is just horrifying. Jimmy Kimmel was famous. And I went back and I checked the dates. May of 2017, remember, and look, God bless him, uh, his baby had heart surgery and it was a heart-wrenching experience for him. He had to go through this nightmare. I thought his son, little baby, was gonna die. Oh, horrible. But he parlayed that by working with Chuck Schumer's office and more in order to push for not repealing and replacing Obamacare, mm -hmm. right? So let's all remember that. So Kimmel himself, made all of these emotional pleas and talks about wanting and needing affordable health care, the need to have a better health care system. He says, I cannot believe that some people have to go through this without health care. He is actually talking about what these none of these all these people are saying. They want to repeal the core tenant of Obamacare, which made it so that you can't deny people health care yeah. based on pre-existing conditions. So which is it? Are you for actually providing people real health care regardless of some circumstance? And once you open this door, it's so funny to me watching this because it's a libertarian dream. They've always wanted to have health care be able to deny to people with mm -hmm. diabetes, to people who are fat, people with BMI over like 25, yep. or charge them more, or make it so that if you Engage, if you eat at McDonald's, you know, like once a week or whatever, that means you have to charge more for your health care. Yeah, if you're a smoker, I think, wow. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's immoral. You know why? Because people get raised in all sorts of different conditions, and it makes it so that when they get sick, they need to make sure, or we need to make sure that somebody's actually going to go ahead and take care of them. What he's talking about is some sort of deeply libertarian fantasy of being able to deny people health care based upon their past previous choices. If we treat alcoholics, which I think we should, should. If we treat people who are addicted to drugs, which I think they should, which we should, yeah. should we not also do the same if you're going to make the choice not to get the vaccine? Of course. I mean, I cannot think of anything more abhorrent than pushing this type of stuff. And yet, the weaponization of all of this by elite media spaces is Terrible. I mean, Brian Stelter, you know, the great, you know, CNN media janitor, he tweeted this out. It was incredibly revealing. Let's put this up on the screen. He says, quote, an unvaccinated minority that doesn't watch the news or trust the news is putting the vaccinated majority at undue risk. There's no way around that reality. Mm -hmm. Now, number one, of course, he has to make it about the news. But number two, how do you think it got there, Brian? How did we get to this point? Why yeah. do so many people not trust the news? Why do so many people not trust what you have to say? Why do so many people not trust maybe MSNBC who has a doctor on who says, screw those people, I as a doctor am I gonna go ahead and deny them healthcare. You put all that together, I have a pretty easy answer for you, but they don't want to hear that real answer. That's that's the great tragedy of this all. Yeah, it is funny because in that tweet, it's like he almost gets it. It's like, right, right. Yeah, yeah, they don't trust the news. <laughs> think about that, Brian. Why do you think that could be? What do you think? I mean, even in the past few weeks, we have perfect examples from like, let's bring on John Bolton to talk That's about right. why we should stay in Afghanistan for forever. Well, let's publish a Condi Rice op-ed or make the same case. I mean, like they just embarrass and lie and propagandize at every single turn 
And then we can tune in to, you know, Chris Cuomo not covering his brother's scandals. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, they don't trust us. It's their fault, right? It's all on them. It's actually something we're going to talk to Thomas Frank about because um, he comes from a, a left perspective but is really good on this, which is that the media and uh, the political class, rather than focusing on, like, why is it that there's such a large proportion of Americans that don't trust the government and don't trust the media and so are very skeptical of the vaccines— all of the blame gets put on the individual people. Yes. It's this very individualistic sort of like bootstrapsy personal, you know, responsibility narrative applied to a global pandemic and all used to, again, convince people. It's weaponized to convince people that your average American is stupid. They can't be trusted. They should be held in contempt. And we, the elites, we're the smart ones. We understand the science. Just mm -hmm. trust us. And we'll handle this for you. So that's why this type of thinking is so dangerous. And, you know, it also speaks to Liz Brunig had a great piece about this, again, from a left perspective, saying, don't cheerlead the deaths yes. of people who didn't get vaccinated. There's such a lack of any sort of culture of tolerance or forgiveness or humility or care and concern. All of the sort of clout and status is gained by picking someone out and shaming them and deriding them and cheerleading their literal death. And that's just a disgusting, immoral direction to go in. And it's also completely counter to what any sort of liberal or progressive or left ideology actually looks like and stands for. And look, that's what screwed us in the beginning. And I'm not, you know, we're not putting anybody off the hook. Trump is the one responsible for a lot of this, which is that by polarizing the entire electorate along coronavirus restrictions, we are the only developed country on earth which actually got more, uh, more disunited yeah. during a pandemic. The only one. Every single other country, you saw mass coalescing around the leader. Yes, there is some dissatisfaction, France, Britain, you know, uh, across the Western world, not even close to the madness that we have here. But when you live within that dynamic and you're Biden or you're the media and you claim that Trump was the one who was doing this, well, they have just as much of a role and they're not relinquishing that role. And that's why I want to point to this to say that it is probably the single worst thing that you could do to confirm the fears of a lot of these people who don't trust the system and who don't want to get a vaccine. A lot of them look at it as the road to even more so onerous restrictions and say by the government what you should and should not do. The booster shot is a good example, which is that, look at the booster rollout. Total disaster. They came out and they said, everybody needs a booster after six months. Yeah. Then the New York Times reports that the Biden administration got out ahead of its skis and that they may have to revise the booster recommendation. Oh, wow. So which is it? And then they say that actually there were two career FDA officials who resigned from the administration over this entire thing around boosters. If that had happened under Trump, I think we all know how the reporting exactly would have gone. So you look at that all together and you say, well, what is happening here? Or what about for somebody like me? I got vaccinated and now I'm COVID. Do I need a booster shot? I don't know. I mean, is the government going to tell me that? Should it only be for people who are over 65? Uh, should it be for people who are immunocompromised? The, the way they have set and rolled out each of these recommendations has had absolute disaster. Same thing, Chris, I was looking at Johnson & Johnson. Do you remember that Johnson & Johnson pause yes. in which we were talking about Terrible. how it was gonna be a disaster? There had been a exponential increase in the number of vaccine appointments for every single day until which date? Which date? You can go and you can track it. The exact day that they put the pause on wow. Johnson & Johnson. That was, as we predicted at the time, one of the biggest gifts to the anti-vaxxers yep. that you could have ever had. So we need to have a lot more talk and discussion around the way that they themselves have failed to communicate all of this. To I, If I can't understand the booster, how is somebody who is going about their day-to-day -day life, and this is the only podcast or show that they listen to, what are they supposed to do? Yeah. You know, it's my job to sort through all that information for them. That's the problem that we have right now. Yeah, and because this has been politically polarized from the very beginning, and I do think you're right to place a lot of the blame for that initial, like, making it terrible from the jump, a lot of that lies at the feet of Donald Trump. 
because we've had this polarized reaction, I'm actually convinced that the sort of middle course is the correct course yeah. in terms of COVID. Um, schools should be open. We should be encouraging very strongly um, and using various tools that are supposed to get people vaccinated. We should, I mean, masks or not masks is probably not that big of a deal at this point. Um, they work. Sure, if you're in an indoor setting, that's really close. Good to wear them outdoors. You definitely, you know, are going to be fine without them. A, a sort of reasoned middle approach is what's called for. And because you've had this political polarization over coronavirus, nobody is basically falling. Everybody's at the extremes. You've got the extreme, like, I'm never, I hate masks, I'm never going to wear a mask, and, like, any sort of restriction is an infringement on my liberty, and I'm never going to get a vaccine. Right. You've got this, like, extreme reaction over here, and then you have an extreme reaction over here that's like, there was one case Three counties over, we got to shut down the school. We got to go back into lockdown. We got to double mask. And so both of these are, you know, one is vastly overestimating the risk to themselves, especially since those people in that camp are all vaccinated. This one is dramatically underestimating the risk to themselves and to their communities. And because it's become so polarized, there's very, very few, certainly public officials, but very few people in general who are taking just sort of like a reasoned, moderate risk assessment type approach because what's been rewarded in our political system is like all in or all out. And um, it's made it so it's very hard to respond to this thing effectively. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.